Good morning. The Lord be with you this, the sixth Sunday after Holy Trinity. The order of service is Divine Service Setting 3, found on page 184. Our service is as usual, and so we begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 596. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is the strength of His people. He is the saving refuge of His anointed. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. To you, O Lord, I call my rock. Be not deaf to me. Lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy, for when I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. The Lord is my strength and my shield, in him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of His people. He is the saving refuge of His anointed. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. And on earth, peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee. We bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with my Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Old Testament for the sixth Sunday after Holy Trinity is written in the second book of Moses, commonly called Exodus, the 20th chapter. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day by keep, to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall, do no work, should, shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and, re and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or his ma female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return, O Lord, how long have pity on your servants. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The epistle is written in St. Paul's letter to the church in Rome, the sixth chapter. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his, 
we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with, with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. For whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The law of God bites. It hurts. It kills. Best avoid it, right? Wrong. But that is how so many Christians approach the law. They ignore it. Or worse, think it is bad and something to be opposed. In too many churches, coming from too many pulpits, is the message that because of Jesus, the law is abolished. That it is now found null and void for us who are in Jesus. In other words, too many claim that because of Jesus and his cross, we are now free to do whatever the hell we want to because we have a perfect get-out-of-hell-free card in the gospel. Shame on them for, for promoting such a lie. Shame on us for hearing it and believing it, or at least wanting to believe it to be true. We want we all want to believe that the freedom of the gospel is liberty to do whatever we want. But that is not at all what we have gained by Jesus' sacrificial life and death. What we have received is freedom from sin, not freedom to sin. St. Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, clearly lays it all out for us today in the epistle. We have died to sin, so how can we live in it any longer? It no longer defines us. We are alive now in Christ Jesus. We are made righteous for His sake. In other words, we put away our former way of life and assume the life of Jesus by faith. We no longer want to think, speak, or do as we formerly did we no longer try to justify ourselves and excuse our past sins or our desired sins in the future. We do not do this anymore because there are no excuses, no justifications of ours great enough to make it all right. In fact, whatever we propose to do makes it all worse. Our sinful Selfish justifications themselves need forgiveness. So the law of God is by no means destroyed. As Jesus said, the law is not abolished by him, but rather fulfilled. It is done, and it is done perfectly by Jesus, which is no small feat. And it is critical in the economy of salvation that Jesus did this sacred act. He must have kept the law perfectly. For him to, do, to have done this, however, it was not just an external outward thing. Now, certainly he did do that. He did keep the law in thought, word, and deed. He not only refrained from breaking the law, but he also actively did what the law requires. For instance, he never killed anyone, but he also helped and supported everyone in their physical need. He never cursed God out or used his Father's name in a profane manner. Instead, he called upon God's name in every trouble prayer to pray, praise, and give thanks. He kept the law perfectly. But he did even more. More for us. We have a huge problem that we forget. We forget so often deliberately because it hurts so much. Hurts so much to remember the truth. We are not Jesus. We cannot come remotely close to keeping the law of God. Everything about us is entirely unlike Jesus. We cannot think, speak, or do rightly according to God's law. In this dark reality, we do not run or try to keep the law, but run to or try to keep the law, but run and hide from it. But our hiding is futile. It is futile because we are foolish to think that we can hide from the truth, from God himself. In hiding from the law, we actually actively break it. We elevate ourselves to godhood 
and thereby declare our enmity against the true God. Because there is only one. Instead of abiding by His holy law, we fabricate our own rule and measure. We do not call upon God in prayer, but instead curse Him and rely on ourselves and our own understanding to make it to tomorrow. Sadly and pathetically, we have become so bad at this that we conceal our disdain for God and His law by veiling it in what appears to be religious piety. We, ima we imagine that we are good at looking good, even so good so as to fool God. Often this personal piety manifests in a measure of degrees or relative rules, rule that compares ourselves to others. Now Jesus addresses this in his scriptures. He did it last week in our gospel lesson. And he rebukes us for it. He rebukes us for judging others with our own measures. Jesus meant that we are not to compare ourselves to others who we imagine are somehow worse sinners than we are. Examples of this can be observed when we imagine that our church attendance is somehow more acceptable to God than others. Because we're here nearly every week and they, well, not so much. Or when we put, it, put in the plate our first fruit tithe, generously giving of at least 10%, while others, well, not so much. Now these are some of the usual examples, but there, are, there is another that Paul and Jesus are addressing today. It is knowing that we are not perfect, that we do not attend divine service as we ought, that we don't give alms as we ought, and that we don't pray as we ought, but then still attempt to excuse ourselves by simply saying, well, we try. We try. But to this, Jesus said, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Truth be told, we don't try as hard as we imagine that we do. What we are good at is thrashing about desperately trying to hold on to what we imagine is life. What we have, however, is death. And a debt that we cannot pay off. And on top of all of that, we perpetuate this habit by teaching the next generation. When we make excuses and change the measure, we teach our children that, we can do, that they can do the same. But they will not change it from where God started, but where, where we have moved things. According, they will judge and change things according to the measures we have established. The sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generations is, the only, is only the beginning. It's that serious. In this serious situation, despair easily devours us as we come to realize who we are and what we have done. It's easy to curl up in the corner and sob uncontrollably the weight, the debt is impossible to over overcome. We cannot pay what we owe. We cannot save ourselves. Which is exactly the truth we must confess and why the law is still given to us as Christians. It shows us that we are indeed poor, miserable sinners and we need a Savior. Our sins require payment. But there is only one who has sufficiently rendered that payment. It is He whose righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. It is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Our salvation is accomplished and delivered to us by grace through faith in Jesus. That is to say, we are entirely saved by God. 
for Jesus' sake. He calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies us by the gospel, and He freely gives it to us. And it's that gospel, that good news of Jesus Christ crucified that is graciously gifted to us. It is the gracious gift of God that is given to us and by which and, and by which faith is created and sustained in us. The Word of God that is Jesus was spoken to us at our baptism. And there, what Jesus has done perfectly is made ours in such a way as if it was us who were actually doing it. As if we actually kept the law ourselves. And this perfect gift, in fact, changes who we are as it is received by faith. It changes who we are and what we are then capable of doing now as baptized believers in Christ. Our being does not remain as it was. It is made new. It is regenerated. The gospel doesn't just sit in some pocket in us to be pulled out whenever convenient. No, the gospel of Christ becomes who we are and our affections. Our desires are forever changed because we are entirely changed. Because of the gospel, what was previously impossible for us, now, though imperfectly, is possible. We cannot in any way save ourselves. That still is and forever will be Jesus' doing. But as regenerated saints, We can and do seek to keep God's law, His perfect will for our lives, what He wants for us. God's law is His guide for us Christians, us baptized believers. It is what is good for us, not according to our own ideas, but as God has determined what is good for us. The law of God shows us how we are to live as Christ toward God Himself, and for our neighbor. We do this because of the gospel of Christ, not because of coercion. He has fulfilled the law. Jesus has fulfilled the law and then paid for our breaking it. He has made atonement. He has paid the price and then given it all to us. He suffered and died on the cross to leave no account unpaid. In fact, what He paid left us and our need entirely satisfied. We are overflowing with His blessing. We lack nothing today or tomorrow. This means that whenever we imagine that we need or don't need this, that, or the other thing to make us happy, it's a lie. It's a lie because we already have Jesus. Jesus who has taken care of everything. Our forgiveness, life, and salvation are provided in full. But so also all our needs of this body and life. Whatever comes our way, whatever God blesses us with, as we live according to God's law fulfilled by Jesus Christ, we fear nothing. Not life not death. When the gospel is received and believed and we in faith live in our God-given stations, our whole perspective in life changes. We begin to see everything as Jesus did, which was in faith toward God and fervent love toward the neighbor. In other words, when we are crucified by God and His law, He then resurrects us. He resurrects us as new men. New men who seek others to love, to to give to, to sacrifice to. When we have everything in Jesus already, that's how it is. We don't need anything for ourselves. We simply give. We give as we have first received from God. That is what it means to be a baptized believer 
That is what it means to be righteous in His forgiveness, covered in His sacred blood. We trust God with all our heart, soul, mind, and body. And we in turn love our neighbor in place of ourselves. Now Jesus wraps today's Gospel up with a call to repent of holding grudges. Now grudges are the height of our brokenness as sinners. Holding a grudge is the epitome of the old way of darkness. It is to entirely think of ourselves and what we think we need or deserve. To hold a grudge is not to fear, love, and trust in God above all things, nor is it to love our neighbor in place of ourselves. Now Jesus rebukes us for all rebukes us all for such venomous behavior. As forgiven and regenerated men, we repent of such wickedness and desire to seek reconciliation, especially with our brothers, our fellow baptized believers in Christ. It doesn't matter what they've done. We are to seek reconciliation, to seek them out, to forgive and be forgiven, Even the worst offense against us is covered by Jesus. It's covered by His blood. And so it's paid in full. We want others to know and to receive that as well. We do not need our pound of flesh in restitution. No, the body and blood of Jesus in the supper are sufficient for us in that. No, we are given to forgive them. Now, uh, that forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean that we become best buds, but it does mean that we can gather together without restraint, without hindrance, free. Free from sin. Free to gather and receive Jesus and His righteousness. Just as He eats with sinners and tax collectors we can do the same. The goal of the baptized believer in Christ is always to want, to seek, and to foster unity in Christ. It is to be like Christ because that is exactly what Jesus wants, seeks, and fosters in us. And so, we seek to do the law, living in the forgiveness of sins for Christ's sake, seeing everything that God gives us as His good and gracious will for our good. In Jesus' name, Amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Create in me clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cleanse me now away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen.
In our prayers this morning, we remember Elsie Miley, who this last week uh, suffered a stroke. Uh, she is recovering well at home and will be undergoing therapy over the next few weeks. We also continue to pray for Cheryl Krieger, David Rathke, and Donna Trubach as they uh, are being treated for various ailments. Uh, and we also then pray for all those whom we will name in our hearts. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who perf whose perfect righteousness covers our sin and whose innocent suffering and death frees us from the, the prison of everlasting death. Lord, in your mercy. God of all concord, by the death of your Son, you reconciled the world to yourself and made peace between God and man. Give us your spirit of reconciliation that your people may live together in forgiveness and harmony. Lord, in your mercy. Send laborers into your harvest, Lord. Preserve your ministers among us uh, devoted to your word and to prayer. Give many servants to your er, servants to your church that neither the preacher preaching nor the care of your people may fall into neglect or disregard. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Lord, you have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. Jesus Christ, your holy arm. By his death and resurrection you have worked salvation. Strengthen the song of your church. Give skill to musicians, poets, and artists. Give boldness to your congregations in this and every place to sing the eternal new song of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O oh Lord, you will have, you will that your, sorry, our Lord, O oh Lord, you will that we live a holy life and love our neighbor as ourselves. Give us your Holy Spirit and teach us to honor authority, protect life, cherish marriage, respect possessions, defend reputation, and be content with the gifts you give us. Guide and bless all fathers and mothers, pastors and teachers, as they bring up children in wisdom and in favor with God and man. Lord, in your mercy. Bless the schools of the church and all colleges, universities, and centers of research and those who teach and work in them especially St. John's, as we, are to, we seek to open Lutheran Classical Academy in fall of 2025. Grant your wisdom in such measure that people may serve you honorably in church and state and that our common life may be conformed to the ways of your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Father, you have given us your own spirit in our baptism, your own spirit in our baptism into Christ. Defend us from all spiritual attacks. Guard us in body and soul. Help those afflicted by any adversity, especially Elsie Miley, Cheryl Krieger, David Rathke, Donna Trubach, and those whom we now name in our hearts. And lead them to renewed strength and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the Holy, Su in the Holy Supper, you forgive our sins and bind us together in your communion of love. Grant that we too may gladly forgive the sins of our brothers and let no division arise among those uh, gathered at your table. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, 
Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do, in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Shed for you the blood of Christ, shed for you, the blood of Christ 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 shed for you. Now that through body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come. Depart in God's peace, your sins are forgiven.
this life and the life to come. Depart in God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The body of Christ gives us peace. 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 The body of Christ. Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of 
Now the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come. We bow to God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
Lord, blessings to you again this uh, sixth Sunday after Holy Trinity. Um, just a couple of announcements. Wednesday, uh, tomorrow night, uh, we continue our study on the Augsburg Confession. Uh, we got into good works, and uh, we're now getting into uh, the end of the, the book uh, of the Augsburg Confession, and then uh, someday we'll get into the Apology of the Augsburg, the defense. Uh, but we're making our, our, our time uh, and getting through it and having good opportunity for fellowship. Uh, we meet at 6.30 for Gemulekite, and study starts at 7, and we go till 8.30. So uh, all are welcome to come. There's usually some goodies. I heard that there's some smoked cream cheese coming tomorrow night So, uh, so for, for crackers and dips. So uh, come one, come all. We look forward to seeing you. Um, we have Ozaki County. Yep, been out for a couple. Yeah, we got plenty. So, And Tim, do you want to... Yeah, well, our, no, our, our giving, the plate. Okay. Well, we still need the... So as it is, uh, we have this year been requiring to, to take from some, uh, uh, some restricted funds to make uh, bills and uh, payroll. And so I mean, we have the money, but it's not meant for that. So we are keeping accounting of that and uh, intend to pay that back. Uh, but we uh, are a little light in the plate, and so we want to uh, exhort you to, to, to consider giving a little bit more. I know that the recession has not been great to, uh, to us, but uh, as, as mentioned, we are, we are people of the gospel and uh, we don't need our money for our own personal benefit, but, but we need uh, this place for the gospel to be preached here, the sacraments to be administered, and, and some of that does need earthly mammon to, to operate. So we uh, encourage you to consider uh, giving a couple bucks more uh, each month and uh, uh, to meet the needs of the gospel in this place, that it might go forth not only for yourself, but also for uh, your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. So, so continue uh, to pray about that as we go forward. Uh, are there any other announcements at this time? You have a party on Friday. Yes. So, yes, Chuck's got a party. We are remembering, remembering uh, Darlene. So we... Uh, at the Yacht Club here in town. It starts at 5... It'll be 5 o'clock, and I won't put bills late. 5 o'clock, so we're going we're gonna to close down. The t d d I will not bail you out, just like, you know, <laughs> that's not what the offering goes for. So, <laughs> so uh, no, but we, w we remember her, and, um, and we look forward to uh, remembering her with Chuck and uh, the, her, his family. So, God's peace be with you. Uh, any others? Uh, seeing none, may God keep you safe in the palm of his hands until we meet again. God bless.